Not the press, but members that can cap capsize and members that can checkmate and annihilate exploitation, greed, and breach of trust. The pain is mightier than the gun, even where the gun has bullets inside. You are all welcome. Those from far and wide, I welcome all of you. I appreciate you, and I feel honored that uh, you accepted my invitation to come and listen to my own side of the story, part one. This press conference is necessitated by the official press conference that the secretary to the government of the state gave out yesterday. Some of you were there, I could see the faces. I felt these are times when silence is not golden. I felt I owe the people of Kasana and the larger society an honest explanation so that even the doubting Thomas will have a clear horizon, a clear sky to enable him take a position or remain on the fence at his own peril. I will therefore start by having two opening remarks and they are very important. The one is when it comes to taking a decision to act or not to act, to do or not to do, to be or not to be, every person that I know, and I will mention here, ask only one question when he's taking a decision. Ask only one question. If he is an economist, he will ask himself, this action that I'm about to take, is it economical? If the only question that bothers the economist, is it economical? If he's a lawyer, he has only one question for you. Is it equi equi equitable, fair, and just? Once it is, he doesn't bother. If he's a politician, he will ask, is my position and my intention going to be popular? Even if it's going to be injurious, as long as it is popular, it will send him, he will take that decision. If it's a diplomat, he will ask another question. Is it diplomatic? If it is a coward, he will ask the question, is it safe? keep on thinking of other questions that other professionals will ask. But people of conscience ask only one question. Is it right? And once it is right, they go ahead to do it. Irrespective of the consequences, the circumstances, the outcome and the party or parties involved. This I think people should get very clear from me. People of conscience are doing that because they are conscious of death, resurrection, judgment, accountability, reward, for hell or paradise. Once you are conscious of this, you must not bother who is not going to be happy with their actions, who is going to be injured because the injury is not deliberate. It's an injury that can heal. Go ahead to do it.
I am sufficiently convinced that what I am doing and will continue to do in respect of Christian state, then, now, and thereafter, is right before God. It's right before people with any iota of conscience. So help me God. I am a student of government, politics, and economics. I have political, I have no political motive. Particularly our suicidal brand of politics with chain of dash hopes, broken promises, and harvest of death. I would rather watch it as a spectator and commentator. I pray to Allah to take away the life he gave me, the day and moment my heart begins to contemplate dragging me into seeking any elective political office for life. I am not anyone's lanky. I am not doing anybody's bidding. Nobody can use me to achieve his political calculations. If the information I make and continue to make available help to salvage the people of my state and my country, I am fulfilled. My aim is not to incite anyone against anybody, but provide wide spectrum of verifiable information so that people and those who can govern them, so that people can use it as a tool of evaluating governance and those who govern them. My most important motive, however, is to avoid an inevitable, inevitable question on judgment be by Allah such as a question that will be inevitably asked by Allah on me and on all of you. Mahadi, how did you manage all the favors I bestowed on you in your earthly life? This press conference is in seven parts. Number one, cumulative response to all other press conferences or releases issued and to be issued in the future. You don't need to be a lawyer to understand the age-long global norm which insists that he who asserts must prove. He who accuses must show evidence. He who governs must explain. He who denies must defend with verifiable facts. He who asks and was given people's mandate and trust must listen to their voices. Option he has known. That court of public opinion is just for a start where people make up their minds rightly or wrongly. But the real place to prove any innocence is in a court of competent jurisdiction, presided over by men and women of honor, despite the minority bad acts among them. The review, it will also contain the review of Minister Government press conference from the oral and body language and indeed the response of the SSG. It was clear that the SSG was either wrongly advised to convene the press conference he convened or Nemesis caught up with him to tell more lies or his wish to draw wool over the media and the public eyes or both. Part of the conference is also 
a clarion call to all organizations, security agencies, whose names, offices, and or institutions were documented and mentioned with huge amounts of money drawn from the security and escrow accounts of the state government for the purpose of giving them, particularly withdrawals from UBA PLC Katina, account number KTSG 1019-265062, and Fidelity Bank account number KTSG 5031160 to come out and make an honest statement, if not for nothing, at least for posterity and avoiding of nemesis. These accounts I quoted above, the SSG had no courage. If he had one, he could not have the courage. No extra guts, no audacity to bring them out to the limelight and the scene of the media because they are the almighty accounts that are being treated in absolute secrecy. The conference also is a glad tide and call to the people of Katana who have been asking one question that everybody in distress will ask, a Christian or Muslim, and the question is, 